tonight, iOS is here, but not without some issues. The Chinese hack military contractors and more Wi-Fi for those who fly. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 174 for Wednesday, September 17th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting, healthy snacks right to your door. Forget the vending machine and start snacking smarter with healthy, delicious treats like Asiago and Cheddar Cheese Crisps. Ooh, how very British of me. To get your free NatureBox sampler, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane. Welcome to Tech News Tonight. We're going to get right into our top story with Anthony Ha, writer over at TechCrunch. Hello, Anthony. Hey, Sarah. How's it going? Well, it's going very well. So before the show, I asked what's new, and you said, well, you're downloading iOS 8, and it's taking forever. You're not the only person to complain of that. So you actually haven't really been able to try it out on one of your devices yet. I, I have not been able to try it out, so I have basically nothing to contribute. <laughs> Good. I'm so glad we called you. Uh, it's it's a big download, though. So you're not alone as far as somebody who not only realizes, oh, this is going to take longer than I thought. But in many cases, people are having to get rid of gigabytes of storage in order to load this thing. You need right. around five gigabytes. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's that's um, you, about five free. And then, I mean, I think it, it'll take about one once you've installed it, but you need five free. So I've basically had to delete like all of the music on my phone. Oh, boy. Yeah, well, the U2 album hopefully was not part of that. Right, you know, eh, I've got Spotify, it's fine. <laughs> We've got new keyboards as well. It seems as though, uh, although I have heard from folks who are pretty familiar with the Android version of, let's say, the swipe keyboard, that right. uh, there is... Um, there, there's some lacking features if you're going to compare the two. We do have support for third-party keyboards for the first time in the history of iOS. Right. right. It's both, I think, that, that it's improved in two ways. One, that there is now predictive, uh, it's a feature they call it quick type, um, which is predictive typing, and, and, then, um, and then also support for third-party keyboards. So I think in two areas where it's probably going to get better, although uh, yeah, I, I haven't used a ton of Android keyboards, so I can't compare. Yeah, n nor I. I. I guess I've but been... But it'll be better for us. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's not new. It's just the best. Isn't that what Apple <laughs> always likes to say? A few <laughs> issues, though. Uh, HealthKit has been apparently delayed to a bug within iOS itself, which prompted Apple to remove some health apps from the App Store, I guess so that we don't download them and then think that they're broken until a fix is released. I have to think, right. for one of those third-party health, health app uh, developers, that's pretty disappointing for a day like today. I would imagine that's pretty disappointing. And I, I think, you know, ultimately that's probably the right decision though, because you hear about so many stories about how if you download an app and you have a bad first experience, then you're just never going to come back to it again. So I think it, it makes sense given that there was a bug, but yeah, I have to imagine they're not very happy. I, I did get um, at least one email from a health app developer that was sort of frantically like, oh no, yeah, we've got some issues to work out. Don't write about us yet. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm it's, very happy about it. And it sounds like Apple is saying, well, this is this will be worked out by the end of the month. I mean, it's only the 17th. So again, a couple right. annoying weeks, I suppose, if you want it just to be your big splash <laughs> yeah. as a health. Right, exactly. Health I mean, I, you know, I think that's the challenge of when you're sort of piggybacking on like, uh, you know, a big event like this. If you're a developer, I think is a like you can get a lot of... Um, you know, you can you can get a lot of attention and it can be really exciting, but then you're so contingent on, you know, so many other things and, and you know, really dependent on Apple. Now, one of the things that I know a lot of people are excited about is continuity. iOS 8 uh, will allow you to uh, uh, answer a phone call on your Mac if you're running Yosemite, but it does sound like there are some issues with upgrading to Cloud Drive because Yosemite isn't actually available to anybody that's out of the right. beta testing program right now. Right. So just to sort of take that, break that down a little bit. So yes, uh, continuity is about both syncing up between Macs with, with Yosemite eventually, and also syncing up just between different iOS devices. I think syncing up between different iOS devices is, from what I understand, you know, seems to, people seem to be positive on that. But because you're waiting for the update on Yosemite, that starts to break some of the apps that were using other methods to... Uh, to, to sync up. 
um, if you specifically if you up if you up um, upgrade to iCloud Drive, it'll. So there's basically I think a lot of some of these apps are basically telling their use like like notability. They're basically telling the users don't update to um, you know to to the iCloud Drive until Yosemite comes out. Yeah, I have to say, and I I actually use notability, so I'm familiar with how it works. But I would think for most average users. That might be more confusing than if the developer just didn't make a big deal out of it. Am I crazy? <laughs> right. I, you know, that's always, a re I mean, I think it's, it's almost like it's, it's good. You just want to tell people because like, you, again, you just don't want, I think the, the worst thing that can happen is if, you, if something breaks and, and then you feel like you don't, you know, you, the, 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 you know, the developer isn't communicating with you about what's happening. But you're right that in some ways, like just trying to explain it makes my head. <laughs> I just feel like it's one of those things where there's like so many, again, so many moving parts. You just are like, I don't know, man, maybe I should just up, upgrade and, and just let the chips fall where they will. <laughs> just, let's, let's just see how it goes. Yeah. Let's just do it live. Why not? I mean, what's your overall sense of how big a change or an upgrade iOS is from iOS 7 for the, you know, the, the not only people who are already using iOS, but people who might be getting Apple devices for the first time with the new iPhones? I think that um, the, the, my sense is that, I, you know, just again, having read, you know, looked at the features and, and read the reviews is that it's not as big a change or, or people aren't going to notice as big a difference because the look isn't changing as dramatically. Um, but but some of these things like, you know, HealthKit and HomeKit that are these, you know, developer toolkits essentially could potentially make a bigger difference down the road. But I think certainly in the short term, everyone who's sort of waiting uh, for, the, for their updates today, I don't know that they're going to see as big a difference. Anthony Ha writes for TechCrunch. Perhaps their greatest writer, really. Thanks so much for joining us, Anthony, and let folks Thank know you. where they can keep up with you. You can uh, follow my writing at techcrunch.com or follow me on Twitter at Anthony Ha, all one word. This is how I find out who of your colleagues watches the show, by the way. Okay. I troll them and then I see who <laughs> tweets see at me within the next five minutes. Tweets. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm going to be highlighting this one just to, so you, you won't know for sure. You'll just know that everyone's kind of pissed at you. Perfect. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Anthony. I'll see you later. All right. All right. See you later. All right, we are going to talk about food for a second, but we don't want to talk about crap food. You don't want to eat potato chips for lunch. You certainly don't want chocolate. I mean, they sound good, but they're not good for you. Do what we have decided to do at Twit. Go natural with delicious snacks at naturebox.com. In fact, you can get free snacks with a sampler box featuring five of their most popular snacks just by signing up today. Naturebox has... Literally hundreds of snacks. You don't have to feel guilty about eating them because they're good for you. They taste good, but they don't have artificial ingredients. They don't have any trans fats. That stuff is terrible. It's toxic. They don't have high fructose corn syrup. That's not good for you either. You can't be eating sugar all day. You can even find snacks that are specific to dietary needs, low in sugar, gluten-free, uh, you know, no peanuts, that sort of thing. So in the afternoon, when you've got that lull and you're hungry, you can grab some Lone Star snack mix from Nature Box or some smoky pumpkin seeds or Mexicana mango. I could go on. You get the idea, though. They're good, and they're good for you. You can start your free trial and get a free sampler box at naturebox.com slash twit. I guarantee you'll have your favorites in no time. Stay full, stay strong, start snacking smarter. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. Get that sampler box. Get some free food. And thanks to Naturebox for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to more top stories of the day in the tech feed. A U.S. Senate panel called the Senate Armed Services Committee has found after a year-long probe that hackers associated with the Chinese government have infiltrated the computer systems of U.S. airlines, of tech companies, and other firms involved in the movement of U.S. troops and military equipment. The probe ended in March but was made public today and also found that the military's U.S. Transportation Command, or Transcom, was only aware of two cyber intrusions out of at least 20 over that year. Democratic Senator Carl Levin of Michigan, who also is the committee chairman, said in a statement, quote, these peacetime intrusions into the networks of key defense contractors are more evidence of China's aggressive actions in cyberspace. The investigation found that a Chinese military intrusion into a transcom contractor between 2008 and 2010, quote, comprised emails, compromised emails, documents, user passwords, and computer code. In 2012, another intrusion was made into multiple systems of a commercial ship contracted by Transcom. 
Hey, Kindle users, here's some good news. New Kindles look imminent. Several listings spotted on Amazon's German site showed a new Kindle Voyage e-reader with a six-inch high-resolution display and a release date of November 4th. An image of the Kindle Voyage was also found in a user manual with specifications that suggest it'll have a new page press sensor to turn pages and an intelligent front lighting. Amazon has since removed these German listings, but it appears that the new Kindle Voyage would ship in both 3G and Wi-Fi versions. Also, a cached page over at Amazon Japan also lists the Voyage model as 8 millimeters thick and 186 grams in weight, which is thinner and lighter than the current paper white. Amazon lists the Kindle Voyage at 189 euros, the 3D, uh, 3G version at 249 euros, which are pricier than the paper white. So, better? Amazon is not officially commenting either way. Verizon Wireless is jumping on the Wi-Fi calling bandwagon. Everybody's doing it. It's announcing its, its plans to offer the service in the middle of next year. However, company executives are stressing that when a call goes on to a Wi-Fi network, Verizon really can't guarantee the quality of service on that call anymore. And it cites that as a major reason that it took so long for Verizon to launch its voice over LTE service. Call quality. Verizon just wants you to be happy. Last week, AT&T announced that it too would launch Wi-Fi calling in 2015, but that the carrier would only use it as a complement to voice over LTE or 3G-based calling. Both T-Mobile and Sprint had previously announced Wi-Fi calling as well, and T-Mobile is the first U.S. carrier to support Wi-Fi calling on the new iPhone. Speaking of Wi-Fi, let's all refresh Twitter for 11 hours straight the next time we fly intercontinentally. What do I mean by that? Virgin Atlantic has announced a partnership with GoGo and will equip its entire fleet with GoGo's new 2KU in-flight Wi-Fi service, which offers shared connections of up to 70 megabits per second via satellite link, which could allow at least limited live streaming video for some passengers. GoGo's current ground-based wireless broadband provides a shared 3.1 megabits per second speed, which for anybody who's used GoGo on a U.S. domestic flight... Nose is not fast enough. England-based Virgin Atlantic is the first European carrier to sign up with GoGo, and the service should be up and running sometime next year. The Wall Street Journal reports that despite major Apple assembler Foxconn hiring more workers to assemble the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus models at its largest production site in Shenzhou, China, demand is overtaking production. This is according to people familiar with the matter. The company has more than 200,000 workers at the site just making new iPhones, not making anything else, and then key components like metal casings for the phones. Last year, Foxconn was the sole assembler of the iPhone 5S, but Taiwanese contract maker Pegatron was assigned to be the major assembler for the 5C, the cheaper model. So a lot more emphasis on Foxconn this year. An anonymous source tells the journal, quote, we've been churning out 140,000 iPhone 6 Pluses, Pluses and 400,000 iPhone 6s every day, the highest daily output ever, but the volume is still not enough to meet the pre orders. The current waiting time for the iPhone 6 Plus is around three to four weeks. Customers can get an iPhone 6 within about seven to 10 business days. This is according to estimates in Apple's own online store. Finally, finally, is it cheaper to just ditch your car and just take Uber everywhere? Sometimes I wish it was but it might be for you. Kyle Hill, who's the founder of a startup called Home Hero, crunched some numbers, kind of convoluted numbers, but found that if you drive less than the than about 9,481 miles per year, it's cheaper to take Uber X everywhere. Now, Hill notes that this really only works with Uber X, not regular Uber, not big SUVs or town cars. And you'd also have to factor in using half of your time sitting in the back seat of the car doing work. That would be boosting the productivity that you would lose driving in the front seat of your own vehicle instead of emailing or making phone calls. So a little bit time is money type thing going on here. Assuming, though, that you've got a daily commute of 25 miles that lasts about 25 minutes, that crossover point that Hill found is that 9,481 miles. At that point, the cost of ownership and the cost of riding Uber X is kind of the same. So cut out a few miles and Uber may be cheaper than owning for you if you live in a city that uses Uber and you... Don't have a commute like mine. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Watch us on demand. And write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss Tech News today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you then. Until then, I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. 
bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.